Rummaging through my stuff recently, I found this. A theatre program from July 1979. It's for a stand-up comedy show called Superman, starring Chris Langham. I was a journalism student at the time, and he was a rising star on the British comedy circuit. He was my first celebrity interview subject, and I wrote a story about him for the student newspaper. At the time, Langham was fresh off the set of Monty Python's Life of Brian, where he played several minor roles, including one of uh, Pontius Pilate's Giggling Guards. He was also a writer for The Muppet Show, in which he appeared in one episode as Chris the Delivery Boy when the scheduled guest failed to turn up. He went on to be a star of the first season of Not the Nine O'Clock News, and then to some, some further success in the UK with the mockumentary series called People Like Us, which transitioned from radio to television. Other TV hits followed for him, culminating in um, a starring role in Armando Iannucci's celebrated political satire series, The Thick of It. Uh, that's the one that uh, catapulted future Doctor Who star Peter Capaldi to fame as the very sweary political advisor Malcolm Tucker. Langham won several awards and also worked on TV shows with Spike Milligan and Ben Elton and on stage in the musical Crazy For You and Les Miserables. But I'll forgive you if you've never heard of him uh, because Langham's fame faded very quickly after he was arrested in 2005 for downloading child pornography. He spent six months in jail and his name was recorded on the sex register. Suffice to say, he, has, he no longer receives many job offers. Uh, Langham's story wasn't the first showbiz scandal, nor would it be the last. There's Rolf Harris, the singer, songwriter and artist, whose level of fame in Britain always baffled his fellow Australians. He fell from the stratosphere when he was arrested in 2013 over the indecent assault of a teenage girl and was subsequently sentenced to five years and nine months in jail. More recently, American rapper and serial sex offender R. Kelly was jailed for 30 years by a Brooklyn court and at the time of this video is yet to be sentenced by a Chicago court. Other celebrities found guilty of sex crimes include Robert Hughes, the star of the Australian sitcom Hey Dad, film director Roman Polanski, boxer Mike Tyson, rapper Tupac Shakur and glam rocker Gary Glitter. Jimmy Savile, the British DJ and TV host, was famously the one who got away. The full extent of his abhorrent crimes against child victims was not revealed until after his death, despite them being known about by many of his contemporaries. And of course, rumours still swirl around many, many other celebrities who were never charged, not convicted, or found not guilty in dubious circumstances. So how are we as consumers of their art supposed to react? Is their work tainted by their actions? Should we refuse to buy their music or see their films? Should we throw out any of their work that we may already own? If so, what about historical abusers such as Nobel Prize winning physicist Erwin Schrodinger of Schrodinger's cat fame? He groomed 14 year old twins, impregnating one of them and forcing her into an abortion. Designer Eric Gill, who among other things created the popular type font Gill Sands, had a history of bestiality, incest and pedophilia. The 17th century Italian painter Caravaggio was a genius, his canvases are priceless, but he was also a murderer. Two centuries later, French artist Paul Gauguin repeatedly had sexual relations with underage girls while living in Tahiti. And um, what about Werner von Braun, the rocket scientist who helped put Americans on the moon, but is considered by many as a Nazi war criminal? Uh, on the other side of the ledger, there are those such as Oscar Wilde, who were jailed for offences we no longer regard as crimes. I guess my question is, at what point do we separate the art from the artist? Can we celebrate one without acknowledging the other? Is there any fixed rule on this? And what should I do with this program? Should I keep it or throw it away? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, but be careful who you accuse of what, especially if they're still living. Not all high-profile cases have been proven in court, 
and some convictions have been overturned. Please like, share, and above all, subscribe if you want to help me produce more content here. Bye for now.